apologize for my speaking voice also. I'm a music teacher and I have 13 kindergarten classes and they make me repeatedly ill. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm never going to get over it or that teaching kindergarten is just a dangerous profession. <laughs> But um, here's, here's a, a couple of different uh, poems. I, I just want to acknowledge the, the writer of the one who talked about you should never fall in love with a poet because it's absolutely true. So na naming no names in particular, I'll read you a few. Um, this, uh, the first one, these are little tankas or something like that. Uh, Pat Winjo, she's an artist that I knew and I still know her son. And uh, so I, I wrote about her. She was a very huge personality, <laughs> and very firm about it as well. <laughs> so, Pat, Pat Windrow, quite driven and so, created a painting each day of sons, wives, her man. She believed in roast chicken on Sunday with cranberries. And then this one is called Bitter Tonkas. It was written at the Akushnet Mill with uh, the Poet Laureate of New Bedford. Bitter Tonkas quell just about nothing these days. So I am reduced to waiting simply for you. So simply, simply for you. And Conversation with Tears. My heart bleeds green grass, and still nature is sublime. Why then the pained cries, since nature heals so slowly, crying engulfs the healing? There are geese, she said. They refused to be silenced. They honked in our ears. Spring made them young and active. They could not give up their noise. The water shimmered. There are small bass here, he said. Breezes flowed. Oh, I lost my place. Breezes flowed, stayed cool. Was going to put my boat in. Exchanged words, then walked away. Always take the gig. Now, this is a principle among performers, but maybe among people. You know, take the audition, take the chance. It's a sort of a principle in my family. <laughs> there's a, you know, there's another aspect to this principle. <laughs> Always take the gig. Always take the gig resulted in your marriage. I know it so well. It's become my little hell. But still, always take the gig. <laughs> so, um, what was this? Oh yes, then this is Pat's recipes. Pat's French eggplant. Diced eggplant and garlic. Saute with scraps of thyme. Add bay, olive oil, butter. Voluptuous. Stir gently. Eat while singing Pat's praises. <laughs> Dissection. Directions are more precise to heaven. Pat's receipt as such. Half each butter, olive oil, one clove, garlic, two. Thyme and a Turkish bay leaf, a slow saute with diced eggplant. That was getting more specific for someone who didn't have a vivid imagination. <laughs> and then, I don't know, what's our timing? All right, let's see how I can do. Um, I spent part of, I grew up in New York, and I spent part of my time on Long Island. I don't even know if I can read this. Hmm, can I read this? Are you okay if I kind of do this? <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I could only print what my computer allowed me to print this evening, and I got this tiny text here. <laughs> okay, this is called The Abandoned Oyster Factory, Greenport, Long Island. It's a miracle we were never hurt in a wealthy section of Long Island on the North Fork, where grand Victorian houses still stood, echoing their former lives, the best ones impinging on the shore where one could put a boat in with a minimum of push. In this neighborhood where the calm waters of the Long Island Sound boarded the shores calling to all and water lapped us to sleep, there still stood, surrounded by the evidence of neglect and poverty, 
cracked sidewalks sprouting tall weeds and concrete chips crunching under their feet, unprotected, unlocked, uncared for by a t with a tired playground and, and a few swings, an abandoned oyster factory. This is a true story. My brother and I wandered endlessly there, climbing the wheeled trolleys that spun no more, but had once poured acres of processed oysters down their wheels. Tall metal structures that challenged us to climb, while we absorbed that final sense of abandonment. The factory was not only no longer, it was never coming back. The bitter anomaly of such unkept danger in the heart of the wealthy Long Island North Fork, where, as it turned out, there was poverty, and there was even the other side of the railroad tracks, where people of color distinctly lived, and where native privileged children, yet naive privileged children, wandered with a minimum of awareness of where they were crossing the railroad tracks being a known yet abstract concept to them, something to maybe refer to lightly at dinner. Sorry, time. Oh, it's two sentences. Okay. The persistence of the dark linear division, not just of the railroad tracks, with their tired huffing engines and distinct smell of age, but of the generations of dark and light people that ran down the fish-shaped island's spine. <laughs>